Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about what it takes to be an American um, and all these damn foreigners. If it wasn't for foreigners, aliens, uh, we wouldn't have won the American Revolution. You've heard a lot of these names, but it was because of these men with George Washington, all from other countries, that we actually won the American Revolution. Foreigners have always played an important role in making us who we are. But we also used to say, now here's, here's what makes us great. Here's what will make you an American citizen to help us become even greater. We weren't afraid ever to say, this is a God-appointed land and you wanna come, we want you over here, but this is a special place and we need your help to keep it in line. Yes, bring some stuff from your, you know, where you're from, but no one was coming here because they wanted to make another new Germany or another new France or another new any place. They were coming here because it was different. We could have built a wall but we didn't. Instead, we looked at the character of the people that were coming, and if they could make us better, we wanted them here. If they didn't, we wanted them out, and we actually said, get out, and meant it. The history of immigration to America, tonight on The Vault. David, where you want to start here? You want to start with this, this etching? We can, yeah. When's this from, do you know? Oh, this is right after the revolution. It is uh, an early etching, as I recall. Yeah, it doesn't um, say, I don't see a date anywhere it, on it. This was, as I recall when we bought this, this was like uh, within 10 years of the revolution. This okay. is really an early, uh, early piece done after the and revolution. And these are the people that were foreigners that came over. Now these were all- Not the people. Yeah, these, these are, are generals. The generals. Yeah, that these were, were the generals. We were fighting, like after we crossed the Delaware, we fought the Prussians, the Germans. Mm -hmm. um, well, these, this is all in German. Uh, most of these are German or Polish. There's, mm -hmm. you know, there's the dandy of Lafayette standing there saying, look how great I look, um, <laughs> all Frenchmen. But these guys were, they, as we were fighting the Germans, these are guys who are mercenaries, who believe in our cause, and some of them kicked out of the German. Yeah, well, it, von, von Steuben or von Steuben or Steuben or whatever we want to say. Uh, von, von Steuben, where is he? Right there. Right he there. He's right here. This one right here. Um, he's the guy who brought discipline into the Continental Army. George Washington said, get these guys trained. They have no discipline at all. And so he's the one really credited with turning the American Continental Army into something other than a bunch of ragtag farmers. I thought that was... Did he work in Valley Forge with yes. Lafayette? Yes, he did. Okay. Yeah, th th these were two of Washington's favorite right. generals. Yeah. But see, he's a Protestant guy, and the, the German court at that time, and I don't mean court judiciary, I mean the court, uh, yeah. uh, they were Catholic. <laughs> and so they wanted him gone, so they said, he's homosexual. So, oh man, we can't have... So to this day, California textbooks say he's a homosexual founding father. No, no, no. They used that to get him chased out of Germany. He Is was, there any... Any doubt. I mean, homosexuals existed they back existed, then, but any... But as a matter of fact, George Washington, March of 1778, came up with the first ban on homosexuals in the military. Mm. And but they did exist. John Monfort was the guy that they found that was a homosexual. Washington said, no way in this man's Who army. Who is it that we were just, we read a, a piece, it was a, a, an amazing piece, and I think it was Abraham Lincoln that showed when he was on the road, he and another guy there shared... Were three a, of them. There yeah, were, they all shared one bed. That's right. And they tried to make it into some sick Homo menage a That's California. That's right. California, that's in California? California has a law that requires that you show the contributions of homosexuals and gays and, and lesbians throughout history. So they started saying, Abraham Lincoln, he slept in bed with two other guys. Well, that, that was common back then. The, the Continental Army, you slept eight mans to a tent. So they're all homosexuals because they slept that way? But if you're trying to find someone you can highlight who was a homosexual hero during the Revolution, who do you point to? You have nobody. So nobody. And the you question find you say well, is, that we know of. There might have been somebody, well, no, but we true. don't know. It's true. But, uh, not, not known. And, and so, and by the way, you know what the... 
this is some, one of the most oxymoronic things. In the California curriculum, they have George Washington Carver as a homosexual. Now, you explain to me how they got there. I'll tell you how they got there. How did they get there? Well, George Washington Carver, of course, was kidnapped in his mother, and so he was. they were able to find him, never his mother, and so they raised him. And he was raised in a slave family, slave plantation, uh, but because of the way they abandoned him and left him to die, he ends up with lung problems and, and has serious lung problems for the rest of his life. He, right. and he's, so he's no good as a field hand. So they left him to work in the house as a house slave where he learned to cook and to crochet and to sew and to spin. Oh, my gosh. So basically it's like what I said here about uh, Lafayette because Lafayette was known as a dandy. I mean, mm -hmm. he was a guy who liked... His dress, mm -hmm. you know, not his dress, but his his <laughs> not <that> coat <laughs> to to look right, right, and he was always looking very, very sharp. And well, there's there's a great story of these two guys right here in in, in the Battle of um, uh, Brandywine. Battle of Brandywine. There's a guy named Patrick Ferguson, and Patrick Ferguson is a British. At the time, he was a captain. He's the first guy to invent a breech load rifle. Now, back in the American Revolution, you got a breech load rifle. You're shooting a bunch of shots a minute. You're not shooting three a minute. You're shooting eight to nine shots a minute. Mm. And so he's a sharpshooter. He had a rifled mm. barrel in this thing. And he goes into the British generals. He shows them what he can do with this. And so he laid on the ground, and he would pop targets 100 yards off, not 30 with a musket, but 100 mm. yards off. And he would roll and load as he rolled it and popped another target and roll. And he just laid on the ground, kept rolling. And, and they said, mm, that's not traditional. We're not going to do it that way. He said, if you'll give me 100 sharpshooters with this gun, I'll end the American Revolution. They said, mm, and he would have. we're not going to do that. But say, they sent him to America as a soldier, so he's here, and he is a sharpshooter. And in the middle of the Battle of Brandywine, he sat in a tree with two of his guys, and they're just popping officers like crazy up there. And he said, as he was sitting there, that two American officers came riding at him. He said he had them in sight. He said they turned, turned around, and he said, suddenly I had this urge came over me. He said, I've shot enough Americans today. I don't, I don't need to shoot anymore. Wow. And he said, Who and, were they? and the American, he said, the American looked up at me and locked eyes at me. And we looked at each other. I had my, and I told my two guys, don't shoot. It, it, we locked eyes. He looked at me and he said, he was a very cool character. He said, he turned his back on me after a while and just slowly rode away. He said, I could have lodged six or eight bullets in him before he got out of range, but I decided I'd shot enough. Wow. He said the other guy with him was a well-dressed officer who had a big ostrich feather in his hat. It, it was, was Washington George Washington and, and Lafayette. Wow. Yeah. And when he got back to camp, they said, you could have ended the revolution. Wow. I suddenly had this urge not to shoot anymore that day. I'd shot enough that day. So let me tell you another story. This is the one thing, you know, we all have, if, you're, if you collect things and you're always on the hunt for things, there's one thing that I passed on at the time um, because it was going too high. As soon as I stopped bidding, the other guy stopped. It was you and somebody else. I've been in so many of those. Oh, I hate so it. this was, I now think of this. This is so, so important for history to show that yeah, these guys, some guys did exist. I mean, homosexuality, it's not a new thing. Right. It's, not. it's a story about a guy who was working. Uh, as a uh, a cook, it's in during the Indian Wars. It's been a while since I read it. He dies, she dies. Sorry, she dies. She had been living with the army as a woman, married to another guy, and traveling with the army and cooked for them until she died. And then when they were getting her ready, because her husband had died. They, they took off her dress, and they're like, oh, my God. Oh, my. <laughs> and it's a, it was a whole, it was a newspaper article and a handwritten letter wow. about, I was one of the guys that undressed her, and all of a sudden we're like, oh, there's some parts here that don't belong. <laughs> and how he had lived as this woman with the military for a wow. long time. But most of that stuff was not documented, and we don't know. Yeah. And, and how we can go back 200 years later and say... And concoct things. Yeah, and say, well, he crocheted. Mm -hmm. How, how now, outrageously... You know what? For the homosexuals to use that as the example of why he's homosexual ought to be demeaning. It is. That's what to, I was going to say. Yeah. Them, the, and they, they use that yeah. as the reason to include... Yeah. Oh, my okay. gosh. 